So good morning, I am Kathleen Winters. I'm the executive director at Alzheimer's Family Organization. And we're an organization that has been around for, this will be our 22nd year. And I think that we're very lucky in that we have survived COVID um, physically, as well as our company itself. We are all working from home now. So that's why you see, it doesn't look like I'm really in an office. I'm in my office at home. Um, and so we're looking forward now that people are getting vaccinated and things are starting to open up that perhaps as the, the year progresses that maybe come fall, we'll be able to do these events in person as opposed to doing them uh, virtually. I know there are benefits to virtual, but there are also a great deal of benefits for in-person um, events. So a little bit about the AFO. As I said, we've been around for, it'll be 22 years this year. And what we do is we provide education and support services to caregivers who are um, looking after loved ones that have any type of dementia. Even though our name says Alzheimer's Family Organization, we serve all types of, of dementia, it doesn't matter. And so one of the things that we're hearing from a lot of the people that we serve is, well, let's start talking about some of the other topics besides just Alzheimer's. And so today we're gonna to have Bill with us and he's gonna talk about um, fall prevention because we know that as any type of dementia progresses, a lot of times falls uh, as well as with the elderly become a, a high risk. So today that's what we're gonna talk about. Uh, the AFO, we, have, we had our main office here in Hernando County, which is where I live and Alicia lives. And we closed our office in September. It was September that we closed. And at that time, it was our hope that we would resurrect um, someday back out into the community. And so that's kind of where we're at at this point. And now our person has left us. So I know Karen and Bill don't need me to go through the whole spiel about AFO. Karen, how about if we have you unmute and go on to camera and talk about what Mid Florida does, because I'm not sure how familiar Bill is with your company. So at least if no one else logs in, we at least can get that connection made. So let's let's open it up to Karen. Can you hear me? Yes. Yay. Well, it's Friday, you know, stuff happens. Um, Mid Florida is a nonprofit, and uh, we've been around for over 50 years. We're based here in Hernando County, although we are in six other counties. Mid Florida does a multitude of things. Um, I'll just go over real quick the stuff that doesn't pertain to senior services. We do administer the Head Start program, and that's a huge program for us for the kids. Yes. We also have the Children's Advocacy Center, which helps the, the children that are in trouble. We do weatherization, and that's not just for seniors, but for younger folks, too, where we can go in and do weather stripping or get a new refrigerator, that type of thing. Um, we help with electric bills, rental payments, um, that type of thing. But today, we're interested in senior services. So one of our bigger programs is the home delivered meals. Now you need to be 60 or over in order to take advantage of that program. And it is based on a point system. So when we get a referral from our financial umbrella, Elder Options, we will do a phone assessment and we ask some medical questions and see what the situation is with support, that type of thing. And then based on where that person scores, they go on the waiting list. Then once we have an opening, we will do a home assessment and see if anything's changed and then hopefully get them on service for whatever um, because we do other services too, which I'll talk about in a little bit, but right now it's just for the home delivered meals. We also have congregate meal sites. Uh, we cover four counties for these programs here in Hernando, Lake, Sumter, and Polk. Now for the congregate meal sites, you just have to be 60 and over. You can sign up and you can go on in. We don't ask about income. The meals are totally free. The centers are also 
you know, socialization uh, places too. Some sites are really active. Other sites, folks just want to eat their meal and, you know, take off. The sites are closed right now, unfortunately, because of our situation. But I did get word that they probably will be opening in July. So that's a really good thing. I know folks are so ready to get back. They miss their friends. They miss the socialization. So we'll keep our fingers crossed for that to happen. So that's kind of the scoop for meals, free, you know, no charge. Now we also do the uh, transportation, which here in Hernando kind of were really fortunate because Trans Hernando is a mid Florida um, area and we can provide transportation to the meal sites, which we do in all the counties, but Trans Hernando also will take folks to um, doctor's appointments, dialysis, that type of thing. Now there is a charge, no charge for going to the meal site, but if you're going to a doctor's appointment, I think it's $5 one way. So we do provide that service as well. We also have our Alzheimer's disease initiative program, which we can provide respite stays to caregivers, spell them for a few hours, a few times a week. It's not a 24 seven thing. So I have people say, well, I'm going on vacation. No, it's not like that, but we can get them out of the house to re-energize and recharge for a few hours, a couple times a week. Now that is based on income. So it's a sliding scale copay monthly, but they're usually very reasonable. We also have our case management, which we do subcontract with local home health agencies for an aid to go into the home and help with dressing, bathing, brushing teeth, combing hair, long, you know, long days with homemaker, but um, showering, that type of thing. Again, based on a sliding scale and a point system. We'll initially do that phone assessment, and then we'll see where they score. And then if we can bring them on service, um, it will be a, a copay monthly. Now these agencies we do subcontract with our level two background check, which every employee at Mid Florida is as well. That's fingerprinting. So it's, it's a secure environment. I know folks are concerned sometimes with strangers coming into their home. Now with homemaker services, we can go in and do light housekeeping, scrubbing the kitchen floor, scrubbing the bathroom, doing laundry. We can even help them pay their bills. We can do errands for them. They can't go with, but if they need groceries or an errand run, we can run an errand for them. Same situation based on a point system and a sliding scale small copay a month. Then we also have our telephone reassurance program, which I've become very familiar with over the last year. Um, of course, with the virus, everything has shut down. So I've been kind of on the phones talking to folks and what we'll do is we'll call our clients because sometimes we're the only one they talk to that week and just see how they're doing and, and talk to them, allow them to socialize a little bit. So we've been doing that as well. And that's our, our whole base, including our um, wait list base as well. We do provide nutrition education which we've sort of had to morph a bit with the sites being closed. But once those sites are open again, we provide not only uh, nutrition education, the best way to eat for a cardiac diet, diabetic diet, whatever the case may be. But also, I'm always on the lookout. I got the sheriff's department come in, talk about identity theft or fraud, that type of thing. We have folks come in and help them uh, reevaluate their Medicare or whatever their situation may be, or have somebody come in and maybe do chair yoga, do line dancing. Some of our sites are really super active. So that's kind of the, the education piece. Then, and I don't want to forget, so I always forget to tell you about Pets on Wheels. Now that program is just here in Fernando County but we also feed our clients pets as well. So we get donations of food and we do also have grant programs. 
that provide the food. And then we can feed the doggies and the kitties. I think we even feed a ferret here in Hernando. Um, so that helps them too, you know, if the finances are tight. And then we have the outreach, which is me. I'm out there talking to folks. Um, if anyone knows of a, a group or an organization that would like to have someone come in and talk about our services, I'm always up for that and happy to do it. I don't know if anybody has any questions. That's kind of us in a nutshell. Thank you so much, Karen. And we always appreciate you being here and supporting the AFO in so many of the counties that we serve, you, you serve as well. So it's a good fit. We're, we're grateful to have you as a community partner. Thank exactly. you. Thank you, Kathleen. And you are right. Today is the first time I think I've heard you mention about the pets. That's oh, I always forget <laughs> because it's only in Hernando County that we do it. So, you know, I, I kind of don't want to mention it in some of the counties when I'm talking. Like, oh, we don't do it in most counties. But yes, so I did good today. That's great. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks. So we're changing up how we're doing things a little bit today. Next, I'm going to talk about the other community resources that work with the AFO that we're going to be here today. I'm really not sure where they are, but I know that Karen had a glitch with her receiving the information, so I'm not sure if that's the case. So our next uh, community partner would be um, Spinks Law Firm, and that would be Ed Spinks, and Alicia will put in the chat box the information for Spinks Law Firm. They do a lot of um, planning and long-term care planning and elder law. So they are a wonderful contact for people. They serve Hillsborough and Pasco County. And also Attorney Spinks is on our board of directors. So we're very grateful to have him and have him be a part of the AFO. I'm again, not sure why he's not here, but I, I wanted to make a mention of him because he is one of our uh, community resources for today. The other community resource is Stedman Clinical Trials, and that would be Dr. Mary Stedman, who also serves on the board of the Alzheimer's Family Organization, and they do just exactly what it says. They do clinical trials for a variety of uh, types of diseases, Alzheimer's being one of them. Uh, Dr. Stedman is active on our board of directors, and most recently, she is the one who provided the sponsorship for the lunch at our her uh, sheriff summit, which was a huge, huge success. I'm very excited about it. And then certainly last but not least of our community resources for today, that would be Senior Helpers. And Senior Helpers has been literally glued to the AFO since its inception um, for many, many years. The, the um, Senior Helpers program in Hernando County has been a huge supporter of the AFO. Our guest speaker this morning is with Senior Helpers, and they do so, so much in the community. And Bill will talk to you a little bit about the company before he gets into his presentation. But I can tell you that they are magnificent, and they have what's called the Virtual Dementia Tour. And that is a big rig that they bring to many of our events, and folks get to go through and see what it's really like for a person who has mid-stage dementia and some of the struggles that they have. So with that being said, I will introduce Bill Tuttle. Bill also used to serve on our board of directors. However, his, uh, the company has expanded so much that Bill is only one person and can only be in so many places at a time. So I know that um, it was very gracious of you to take the time out of your day today, Bill, to share some information with not just us here on the staff because we always learn something new, but I'm sure Karen will get something out of it and our caller that's on the phone will get something out of it. And I'm sure that we will have other people jump on the line as the morning progresses. So without further ado, Bill, if you could unmute yourself and turn your camera on, I will shut mine off and I will turn it over to you. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for having me as a uh, speaker for the AFO Educational Series. It's a privilege to be on here with everybody. Um, I really enjoy speaking to people and helping people with the quality of life. Um, Senior Helpers is very big in quality of life and education, as uh, Kathleen has spoke uh, about the uh, virtual dementia tour. Um, if you live in an ALF or a rehab facility or a church or anywhere, please give me a call. 
Um, my number is 352-835-7191, and we can arrange to have that at your organization. Um, it is very educational, uh, very emotional, um, but you will get a lot out of it. And we basically put uh, neuropathy in your feet, uh, loss of dexterity, arthritis in your hands, uh, macular degeneration in your eyes, and brain confusion, which is at mid-level Alzheimer's. Give you five simple tasks to do, um, and you'll be amazed at the confusion and how difficult it is. Um, but it does allow you to understand what your loved one is going through, and it makes you a better caregiver for your loved one. Um, senior helpers yourself, we go into anybody's home, wherever that might be. It might be in an ALF, it might be in their home. Um, and we come in and make sure the quality of life is good. We do non-medical. Um, we have partners that do the medical side of it for us. Um, so we help with uh, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, um, stroke victims, um, aging in place, hospice, um, anything to keep you independently in your home. Um, so if you have a need for them, again, you have our number, please reach out. We'll be more than glad to come out, do an assessment at your home. And, and maybe you don't need us. Maybe all we need is to educate you and uh, help you provide better ways of doing things in your home. Um, so we're uh, here for whatever resources you need. So enough about senior helpers. Um, myself, I have been here for uh, eight years at Senior Helpers, been in the industry for 11 years. Um, I love what I do. It's the best thing I've ever done in my life. Um, I am a instructor for uh, fall prevention and balance. I'm a certified Alzheimer's instructor, Parkinson's instructor, and a first aid AED CPR instructor. So uh, I think education is very important. love doing it. So today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, fall prevention and balance. Uh, that's very near and dear to me. Um, I had experienced uh, earlier in the year a stroke and didn't realize how important having strong uh, limbs, what I call your arms and your legs, to be able to walk. Um, everyone thinks you need just strong arms. You need the, uh, the legs too. Um, and the way that you walk with a walker is imperative. Uh, I see a lot of people um, they don't adjust the walker. They think one walker fits all. I can assure you it doesn't. They're all adjustable. So you need to adjust it to your height so you're not crouched over. Uh, you need to have your body inside of the walker itself so that you can stop yourself from falling, um, especially the ones that have wheels on it. If you're out there outside of the walker, um, the wheels can get away from you and there you go tumbling down. Um, so it's very important to learn exactly how to use a walker. Um, that's the first part of having good balance. Um, other things that go with balance is check your medication and just not your prescription drug. There could be over-the-counter drugs uh, that you buy that don't really work well with the current drugs that you take from your doctor. So make sure you go to your doctor and let them know everything that you're taking from vitamins to aspirins to anything else that you might be taking over the counter that goes along with your prescription medication. Um, it's real important to do that because uh, if you're a little dizzy, a little lightheaded, uh, you might not be washing your feet as carefully, um, things in the house uh, can trip over like rugs. Uh, we're going to get into more of that uh, in the home. I like to go through all the rooms and tell you exactly what you can look for to make sure that it is a safe place for you to be uh, and, and for anybody else coming in the home. And balance is just not for seniors, it's for everybody. Um, I, I see a lot of people not paying attention to what they do and they trip over curbs, cracks in the sidewalks and they go down, break their arm. Um, and while I'm mentioning that it falls, um, every 13 seconds, someone over 65 falls. That's a statistical data. Uh, the terrible thing about that is that 25% of those falls end in death. Again, that's statistical data. Um, it might not be the fall that gets you. Uh, it could be surgery, uh, infection sets in, uh, pneumonia sets into your lungs, various reasons why um, it can kill you. Um, but it's very important that you're not in that 25% window. So that's what we're going to talk about today to try to eliminate those things. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into the house. Um, the first thing we want to talk about is the floors. Um, you know, when you walk through the room, uh, what are you looking at? What are you seeing? Um, I know I do a lot of assessments in the home. Um, and over the years, let's face it, we collect a lot of stuff and a lot of the stuff we just don't think we can live without. So all of a sudden it gets a little bit overwhelming in the home. 
And then I walk in the door and I go, holy miracle, this is an accident waiting to happen. So I tried to instruct them on how to make a clear path from room to room. Um, I see electrical cord going across the room because there's not a plug in the middle of the room for a, maybe a lamp or maybe a stereo or you have your cord to your cell phone. I see that a lot. And next thing you know, they get up because they have to go to the bathroom. They don't see the cord, they slip and fall. They're living by themselves and they're on the ground for five hours before someone finds them. Um, so I would highly recommend um, something called uh, a life alert. There's several companies that have those. Um, please make sure it has a fall sensor in it because um, the worst thing you can do if you have to push the button and you maybe knock your head into something and you're a little confused, you might not know how to push that button. With the fall sensor, it automatically calls the company. If you don't answer, they automatically send uh, EMS to your home. So it's very nice feature to have on a, an alert system, um, especially if you live by yourself. Um, some of them are even uh, good outside of the home with the GPS. So if you wanna take walks in a park or if you live on a golf course and you wanna walk on the, on the uh, cart pass, um, I play golf myself and some of those golf paths can be pretty bumpy. Um, but it's nice to know that you have that type of safety uh, with you. Uh, so I highly recommend uh, looking into those. Um, throw rugs, a lot of people love throw rugs. They're all over the place. And, and the first thing that I do when I go in there is I'll have them standing by me and I put my foot on it and they'll slide uh, so easily. Um, somebody who has issues walking, um, or neuropathy in their feet, they shuffle their feet. Um, they could slide their feet under the rug and next thing you know, you're tripping and you're going down. Um, so you wanna make sure that if you do have area rugs, um, that they are, they can, you can get adhesive on the back of them so they don't slide. Um, you don't really want the old fluffy type of rugs that are high, you want more uh, level rugs um, with a fine mesh on them. Uh, your big area rugs in your living room area or dining room or your bedroom, those are not as much of a concern as the smaller ones are that you'll see in front of uh, the bathroom sink or the kitchen sink. Uh, you might put a uh, in front of your lounger chair uh, or your lift chair. Um, they love to have a rug there and that's, I see issue people getting out of their chair and boom, they fall immediately because they get their, their foot caught inside the rug. Um, also, um, inside the house, please use your walker um, or your cane. I'm not a, a fan of a cane. I think it's a lethal weapon because uh, a cane cannot prevent you from falling, uh, but it definitely can joust you in your throat. Uh, it can puncture your lung. It can take your eye out. It also can trip your feet um, because there's a little rubber stopper on there and it might get uh, a little tangled. So I'm not a very big fan of a cane. Um, the four-legged ones are better than the a single cane, but still, if you need a cane, then you probably should be on a walker. Um, a lot of people think using a walker takes away your independence. It actually gives you your independence so that you are safe in the home. Um, I'll have to tell you a little bit of the story about this one particular lady. She was 92 years old, sweet as can be. Had a great conversation with her. Um, after the assessment, she said, well, I think I'm okay, um, but I'll call you if I need you. And I went, okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, gave her some suggestions on what to do inside her home. And, and she did have a walker, but she wasn't using it because she said she didn't need it inside the home. So about 10 days later, she calls me back and she goes, Bill, can you come out? I think I need you. So I did. And when she opened the door, she was using her walker and her face was black and blue because she walked and tripped and her face went into the wall of her house. And there was a hole in her wall. She was very fortunate she didn't break anything, but it looked like she'd been beaten up pretty bad. Um, and then all of a sudden she realized how important that walker was for short distances as well as long distances. Um, there's all different types of walkers. You can get walkers with seats. So if you're out and about going shopping, grocery shopping, going to the mall just to walk, exercise is great. And we're gonna talk about that. Um, and you get tired, you can sit down on the seat. It helps you from uh, preventing a fall there. So um, just wanna make sure you're safe and use the walker. It, it's a really great thing. Um, I had when I had the stroke, it was very difficult for me to walk at first. And without that walker, I would not have been able to get to where I am now. So um, the walker is your friend. Um, papers and books, a lot of books and stuff are piled around. Uh, those are severe uh, 
fall hazards, because you could accidentally hit them. They fall down in front of you, you trip over the books and down you go. Uh, we just don't think of things like that because um, maybe it's never happened before. And then it just takes one time. Uh, and next thing you know, you're on the ground. Um, hopefully you do have that life alert that we spoke about um, or a cell phone on you. I know my dad, I gave him a cell phone. I said, dad, keep this on your hip at all times. So if you need me, you can get a hold of me. Um, well, he would call me and then turn his cell phone off. So what good is that? Uh, so please, if you have a cell phone, keep it on. Keep it on your hip so if you fall, you have access to it so you can call 911 or you can call a neighbor, a friend to come assist you in your home if you do fall. Um, a lot of people just leave it on the countertop, uh, leave it in the kitchen, go to a different room. Uh, get yourself a little holster to put the phone in and make sure you keep it on your person at all times. Um, uh, lighting. Uh, especially at night. Uh, I know as we get older, sometimes we have to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. And, you know, how many people use a night light? Very few. How many people turn on the light on their side of the bed? They're going, oh, it's just right there in the bathroom. I know exactly where the toilet is. I can get there and be okay. Um, I've seen so many accidents happen. Um, personally, myself, I have run into the frame of a door, thinking that I was in the middle of the door and clunked my head. And it made me a little woozy. Luckily, I didn't fall, but it can happen to anybody. That's really what that particular story was a little bit about. And they have night lights that are uh, motion sensored. So if you don't like having the light on because you can't sleep with the light on, get the ones that are motion sensored. So when they see you getting out of bed, it comes on, now it illuminates the area, and now you become safe again. So uh, please, if you don't have one, you can go to Home Depot, Lowe's, they, or Walmart, um, they all have those particular type of plugins, and they just go right into an outlet. Um, you don't need an electrician or anything. Uh, very safe to do that. Um, so make sure you do that. Um, carpet on steps, if you have a two-story home, please make sure the carpets are intact. Um, if they're not, you can get a handyman to come there and retack them down. The strips run underneath the carpet. They normally have special tools that will just put them right back down again um, to make sure that you're safe. Um, a lot of things you need to think about when you're in the home. Um, also furniture. Maybe you were not using a walker or maybe you're um, in a wheelchair right now temporarily. Um, make sure you have a good wide path to get through. Just not enough room to get through, but have space on either side. Because you never know, you might move to one side or the other and you wanna make sure you're safe. Um, when we're outside of the home, you want to make sure that you're looking at the ground ahead of you, much like when you're driving a car. Um, don't look at your feet. The feet are just right down in front of you. When you look at your feet only, you're not looking forward, and you might not see that uneven crack in the sidewalk that a root of a tree has uprooted, and you're not familiar with that area. The next thing you know, you're not looking for that crack. You hit it, and down you go. Uh, I, I see it happen a lot. Um, and then if you don't have the life alert, nobody's with you. Um, could be bleeding, a lot of things could happen. So we just wanna make sure that you're looking forward like you would if you're driving a car so you can see the surroundings. Uh, maybe someone is coming running or on a bicycle, uh, like a kid who's really not watching out for the elders. Um, and if you see the bicycle coming, you stop because the child probably won't. Uh, so you wanna be at alert at all times uh, when you're doing that. Um, hydration is very important. You want to make sure that you keep hydrated. Um, the body needs a lot of water. Um, if you're not hydrated, you can get lightheaded. Um, easier to get a stroke, a heat stroke uh, from the heat if you're outside. So you want to make sure you have plenty of water. Um, also, uh, Gatorade is excellent uh, for preventing the getting overheated. Uh, water, matter of fact, is one of the least things that you would take. Uh, in order would be uh, Gatorade, uh, milk, believe it or not. Coconut, water, and then water. Uh, that would help with hydrating the body. Um, not iced tea, not coffee, not a soda. Uh, those are um, drinks, but they will not hydrate you. So make sure it's one of those particular four that you do use. Um, make sure in the bathroom that you have grab bars in the shower. Um, you can get them at Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, they're very non-evasive. They just have really good suction cups. I've tried them, I could not pull them off the wall. Um, so you don't have to worry about 
you know, drilling into your tile and ruining your tile work and maybe uh, having a leak behind your wall. Uh, you can move them. So maybe you put it on there. Maybe it's too high for you or maybe both of your husband and wife are using it and the husband is six feet tall and the uh, wife is five feet. So obviously there's a difference in where the grab bars need to be. Uh, but grab bars are a wonderful thing inside the shower. I will tell you the kitchen and the shower are probably the two highest areas of fall because of water. Uh, it's easy to slip and fall, except for with a soap and all that. So uh, make sure you're alert for your surroundings and the bathroom and the kitchen areas. Uh, we talked about lighting. Um, exercise, let's get into exercises. Uh, everyone doesn't want to do exercises anymore. Um, and uh, I, I will tell you uh, from my experience coming back from a stroke, um, if I hadn't exercised every day, I wouldn't be in the shape that I am in today. Um, I was totally paralyzed on the right side with a lot of rehab and a lot of work. I got back to being uh, stronger today than I was 15 years ago. And it's all about exercises. And I'm not talking about running on a treadmill or getting weights or anything like that. You can do this in the safety of your home from a chair. Um, so you're not worrying about the balance when you're doing it. Uh, you do toe ups. It's when you put your feet and your toes go up in the air you'll feel your calf muscles um, move. And this is called muscle memory. So the brain is now communicating with that lower leg and it's going, okay, we're exercising it. We need to engage the muscles and, and you have a, you're creating a strong, a strong trunk, uh, just like a tree. If a tree doesn't have a, saw, a strong trunk, it's gonna fall in a windstorm. And that can happen to you too. So make sure you're doing those exercises. You can do leg lifts in the chair uh, and you just don't wanna be going like this. I mean, that's, that's no help. Uh, and when you raise your leg, you want to hold it up and count for like five seconds and hold it. You'll feel the muscles, you know, start to um, tighten up. That means you're developing muscle tone. Uh, and that's what you do need to do. Uh, and so that's great for the lower legs. Uh, you also need to, have to do exercises for the upper body, um, the arms. If your arms are very weak, how can you use a walker? You won't be able to maintain your own body weight if you don't have strong arms. Again, you can do this in the safety of your chair. You know, when you're watching television, get a stress ball or a tennis ball and squeeze the ball in your hand. That's gonna work your forearm. And then you can do circular motions with your arm, something like this. And you go forward and you go backwards and it's just keeping the muscles engaged. Um, that is going to help you probably 50% uh, of reducing falls just by making sure that you are um, physically fit as much as you can be uh, for your certain condition. Obviously, certain people can do more exercises than the others, depending on your situation. But everybody can do exercises. If you're capable, go into a swimming pool. If you need assistance, have somebody go in the pool with you for safety reasons, but there's no resistance in a pool. So you really can like jog in place uh, and it doesn't feel like you're jogging. You can hold on to the side of the pool and kick your legs in the water. Uh, the resistance is not as bad, especially if you have bad knees and you've had knee surgeries. Um, so these are different types of things that you can do also to help with exercise. Um, you can also uh, put color tape on rugs. So maybe you're having a little issue with your sight. Um, so if you put something like fluorescent colors, you see the tape and you'll walk to the tape. Um, and that will keep you from shuffling your feet. It actually will make you pick your feet up and place them back down. Um, and, and this is real important for safety for fall. Um, I'm gonna open it up right now to see if anybody has any questions about falls or preventions, anything you wanna talk about on that before we go on to the uh, next subject. I think the, the topics that you're touching on, Bill, are very, very important. As you are saying some of these things, I'm going, yep, I have throw rugs around my house <laughs> and I have this cord for my cell phone so that I have a cord in every room. Yeah, it's something really to think about. And it's surprising. You don't have to be 65 and older to fall because I took a good one the other day letting my dogs out. So it can happen to anybody. So thanks, the information is great. I'm sure yeah. that they will get a lot out of the next part as well. Right. Somebody has a question. How can you get a person to use a walker that refuses? You know, that's, that's a, a great question. And the reason a lot of people think the walker is, um, it takes away their independence. That's what they think. And I'm 
I'm going, well, what do you do now? He goes, well, I just sit in the chair. I'm afraid to go out because I'm going to fall. And, and they've never been taught how to use a walker. So maybe someone gave them a walker. And again, like I said, they don't adjust it. So they're crouched over in it. They feel uncomfortable. They feel like they're going to fall. So they've really never been given instructions on how to use a walker. Um, so uh, they can call senior helpers, call a rehab facility. Um, they can tell you exactly how to use a walker. Like I said, it needs you need to be standing straight up. You shouldn't be crouched over. Um, demonstrate it yourself and show them the proper way of using a walker. Um, I did this with a gentleman who had probably 15 canes. And then once I started talking to him about how they could trip, and he goes, that did happen to me. I did trip over that cane. Uh, all of a sudden, he threw all of his canes away and started using a walker because I showed him he was 6'4", and his, he was using his uh, wife's walker, who was 5'6". Well, obviously, that's not going to work. So we upped the walker on the legs, their adjustable legs, made it for his height, and he went, wow, this is comfortable. And he started using the walker. So it's really, again, it's education. Um, and if nobody knows how to use it, please call me. I'll be more than glad to provide anything I can and make sure those people are safe. Do you think that they find that they don't want to do it because they don't want to accept the fact that they don't have the skills that they used to have? Yes. Yeah, yeah, no, you know, walkers have a bad uh, reputation that only old people use walkers, and that means you're, you know, you're uh, getting close to end of life and all that, and that has nothing to do with anything. I, I, I mean, a 24-year-old could be using a walker because um, maybe they have um, uh, just got over uh, a, uh, a knee replacement. I know that's young, but or maybe they just had surgery. Um, and the walker is going to keep them safer than a cane. So um, I'm a big believer in walkers, if you don't know that. <laughs> yes. Very good. OK, well, so I'm going to turn it back over to you. Go ahead and talk to us about the Senior GEMS program. I think it's wonderful. Um, and it will really help people understand the different parts of dementia. OK, thank you. Uh, yeah, Senior GEMS uh, was developed by Tifa Snow. She is an occupational therapist out of uh, North Carolina. Uh, senior Helpers has been aligned with her since the inception of Senior Helpers, pretty much. Um, her family uh, had a lot of Alzheimer's, so it was very near and dear to her heart. And um, a lot of doctors, you know, they will, oh, your beginning stages, middle stages, or end of life. Well, that's not true. Um, there is six different levels of Alzheimer's, and each one is unique. Um, so people was going, well, how do I let people understand what the different levels are? So she chose to use gems and she just didn't pick a gem out of the air. I mean, the actual gem aligns with the level um, that you're with. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, diamond is one of the levels. That is the uh, beginning stages of Alzheimer's. Uh, you will see a lot of mood swings in somebody uh, with Alzheimer's. They'll have excellent days and they'll have bad days. Um, it's much like a diamond, they can shine bright. They have many facets, um, but a diamond can cut glass and somebody who is a diamond that has Alzheimer's can also be very uh, upsetting to you um, and cut you to the quick uh, because they're upset that they can't drive anymore. They're upset that they can't remember how to cook anymore. Um, so the gyms are aligned that way. So we're going to get a little bit more into the gym, but I wanted to give you a little background on it. Uh, Tifa Snow does come out and talk. Um, if you have the opportunity to go to Tifa, please go and watch her. Uh, I will also say don't sit in the front row because you will get picked on. Uh, she likes to pick on people. Uh, Kathleen's been there and she can assure you, tell you that she does like to pick on people. So uh, I don't know if anybody knows Gallagher, you know, with the comedian who used to smash watermelons on stage. Well, kind of that's what Tifa is. She doesn't smash watermelons, but she will get you involved. Oh, yes. Uh, she, she'll interact you. There's no doubt about it. Yes. So I, I love her to death, and she's always having speaking engagements. And if you're not able to go in person, uh, she has plenty of videos online, um, and they're very worth watching. So a lot of education. Uh, we also have the uh, Tifa Snow um, Alzheimer's DVD. So if you need that, we give it out to anybody who needs it. Uh, it doesn't cost you a dime. Um, just let me know or let Kathleen know. She has some, I was going to say at her office, but they don't have an office anymore. But they, have, they still have the DVD. So get in touch with either the AFO or you can call Senior Helpers. 
and we'll make sure we get there. And it doesn't matter where you live. If we need to, we can mail it to you also. Well, Bill, it's interesting you say that because we have two storage units, one that we use for all of our functions and one that actually was set up with all of our materials. So it looks like an office when you pull up the garage door. So we do oh. technically have an office. <laughs> Excellent. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> so uh, I, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk about the different um, uh, the gyms and I'm just going to go over them real quick and then I'm going to go back to them and, and tell you characteristics and uh, things that you can do uh, to help with the situation with each gym. The, the first gym is Sapphire. Um, then you have Diamond, Emerald, Amber, Ruby, and Pearl. Uh, much like a, a, the Diamond illustrates the level of care there, Pearl is end of life. Um, if you know what a Pearl comes from, it comes from an oyster. Uh, on the outside, oyster looks very ugly, but on the inside, it's very beautiful. Well, that's somebody who has Alzheimer's who is a pearl. Um, their muscle control um, is gone. Um, speaking is probably gone for the most part. Um, but if you try to do things with them that they don't want, they will reach out and um, come alive. Um, and they also could hit you. So, um, but that just kind of demonstrates what the gym is so you know what it is. So let's go back to Sapphire. Sapphire is normal aging. Uh, that doesn't mean that you can't feel blue and have changes uh, that you don't like by normal aging. Um, there's no significant change in cognizance, uh, difficulty learning new things, uh, but that's with anybody. You gotta understand that the brain is at full capacity at 25 years old. Uh, after that, the brain to retain information slows down. It doesn't mean that you can't learn something at 65, thank goodness, because I'm 65 and I'm still learning things but it might take a little bit longer for you to retain the information than when you were 25, 22, even 30. Um, so when I say difficulty in learning new things, it's really just about how quick you can retain the information. Um, so, you know, interesting things that you can do is you don't want them to uh, not do things. So maybe they can't cook anymore, uh, but you can get them to help you prepare the vegetables or make the salad, um, put seasonings on meat before you start cooking it. So you keep them involved. Um, doing laundry, maybe they can't do laundry. Maybe they don't know how to put the soap or how much soap to put in there because they'll dump the whole bottle of uh, detergent in the wash machine. Next thing you know, you got bubbles all over your house. But they're very capable of folding the clothes. So do it together. Uh, as a caregiver, it gives you interactive caregiving, which is real important. So you're not taking away everything from them. Um, so that, that's a sapphire. Um, so I'm a sapphire. Kathleen is a sapphire. Uh, doesn't mean we have Alzheimer's. It just means we're normal aging. So I wasn't saying you had Alzheimer's, Kathleen. So um, uh, you get into the diamonds. They can do old habits and routines. Uh, they're very familiar with that. Uh, they're very territorial. Um, they're less aware of their boundaries. Um, they like familiar things and it's difficult with change. And, and we talked about the change, like not being able to cook, not being able to drive. I, I know uh, my dad had Alzheimer's and when we, uh, I was sneaky, uh, I called DMV and DMV sent him a letter um, said, you need to come in and do a driving test. Um, he failed and DMV took away his, his keys, not me. So I didn't become the bad guy, DMV did. So um, uh, that's a, a trick that you can do. Now, if they pass the test, eh, you're out of luck. Luckily, my dad didn't. So, um, so that was a safe way of getting the car keys away from him. Uh, he wasn't happy about it, but at least it was done in the right way. Um, tell stories over and over again. It's really important that you know a person's life. And if you met them, maybe when you're in the 40s, um, they're not going to know about the earlier parts of the life. And that's what they're going to start talking about. So learn about the um, person who has the Alzheimer's disease, um, because it's going to help you. Um, you can bring them back. Uh, you can bring their mother back to them, bring their family back to them that might, they might have died. Because a lot of times you'll see, uh, where is George, my husband? And, you know, George died five years ago, but they don't remember that. Um, so you do things and make sure to bring George back into the life. Um, and that's where knowing old stories of, uh, of their life really comes in handy. <coughs> So uh, do things that make them happy um, that they previously did. 
um, make them feel comfortable in a situation. Um, activities that give them a sense of control, uh, like folding the laundry. Okay, they're in control there. Uh, picking out their own clothes. In the early stages, that's good. Not in the last stages, because God only knows what they come out of the bedroom with. Uh, I've seen them come with their underwear on top of their pants and orange top and polka dotted pants. Um, if you're not going anywhere and they're sitting in the house, it's no big deal. You don't, you don't need to correct them. But if you're going out in public, you're going to go out to dinner, eh, you might want to get um, uh, a little bit better dressed. Uh, again, I'll tell you a little story about my dad. Um, he loved to go on Saturdays to get broccoli cheese soup at Panera's. Of course, he didn't understand what Saturday was, but I would go over there. And I said, you know, Dad, what's today? He goes, I don't have a clue. And I said, well, today's broccoli cheese soup day. He goes, great, let's go. And I said, okay, well, as soon as you get your socks and shoes on. And he goes, well, I don't want to. And I said, well, then we're not going to go. And it was strange because he always wore socks and shoes as a businessman his whole life. He had no problem wearing, you know, shirts and pants and all that, but he just didn't wear socks and shoes. So he would sit there for a minute and he finally would like tilt his head. He goes, fine, I'll put it on. Go warm up the car. You know, I'm cold nature. So I'd go out to the car and, and turn it on in the wintertime. And I come back in there and there he'd be standing. He goes, well, I'm ready to go. And he had his socks and shoes on, but he was naked as a jaybird. So and the reason I say this is you got to be careful how you say it, because what you and think is the proper way of saying things is not necessarily the way that they uh, interpret it. Because I told him, put your socks and shoes on. So he took that information going, oh, well, I don't have to wear clothes. I just have to put my socks and shoes on. So um, it, it, it was it was kind of funny. Um, but uh, I just want to share that because you can see weird things happening to your loved ones. And now you can understand why. Uh, it's not, they're not trying to um, be ignorant or upset you. Um, they think it's right. And that's what you got to understand that they think they're right. Uh, never argue with anybody with Alzheimer's. Uh, my mom and dad, uh, they were married for 63 years before he passed. And my dad would start yelling at mom when he had it. And she would yell back. And I'm going, what are you doing? He goes, well, he started it. And I'm going, okay, what you need to do is leave the room for 10 minutes, come back. And next thing you know, he's going to ask for that milkshake. And she didn't think that was going to happen. And she tried it and she called me up. She goes, oh, you're correct. So, you know, just patience is a virtue with, with Alzheimer's patients. And everybody um, cannot be a caregiver for an Alzheimer's patient. It takes a lot of uh, patience. Um, and fortitude to take care of someone. And if you're not the right one, then make sure you get somebody in there that can help the situation because it can be very trying. Uh, so that's the diamond. Emerald, um, you're starting to see um, more cognitive issues. Uh, they're going to get lost in their past life, uh, past places, um, past roles. Um, they might think that they were an airline pilot and never were but they used to build model airplanes. So all of a sudden they're in the model airplanes flying those planes. You know, so um, that's where they will, will happen. They'll get a, emotional quickly, change real quick. Um, uh, my, did, my dad would do that. Uh, he would be watching something on television and if he didn't like it, oh, that would just set him into a whirlwind. Um, if he didn't like what my mom would say, he would say, I'm gonna kill you. Uh, well, he was bed bound. Uh, he couldn't get out of the bed. He couldn't walk. And my mom would call me and go, your dad said he's going to kill me. And I said, well, did you give him a gun? Or did you give him a knife? And he said, well, no. I said, well, then he can't hurt you. Um, and I said, you got to remember, mom, they don't understand what they're really saying. And I think that's the hardest thing for a loved one is really understanding what they're going through. And that's why the virtual dementia tour is so important for education. So you know what your loved ones are going through. I just highly recommend it. Um, and if you can't go there, Come to my office. We can simulate it here in my office. Uh, we also can do training for you. We'll put you through our caregiver training at no cost to the family. Uh, sometimes families just can't afford our services, and we understand that. Um, but we are educators, and so please come. We've had plenty of families come to our office, and we teach them how to be caregivers and so that they can take care of their loved ones. So if you're in that situation, please reach out to me, and I'll make sure you get into the next training class. Um, so... Doing familiar tasks, those are things of interest. Um, engaging with others, um, having a job or a purpose. You know, if they like to do model airplanes, maybe they can't do that anymore, but you could get puzzles with airplanes on it, uh, bigger pieces and do it together so they don't get frustrated. I mean, you don't wanna buy a 5,000 piece puzzle of the Alps 
with white snow all over it. And that would drive me nuts. So because you, you can't separate colors and the pieces and everything. So they'll get bored and they'll walk away. That's the last thing you want. You want to be make sure that they engage with whatever you're doing. Um, so, and be a friend, don't be a boss. Um, they're, they're the boss and let them be the boss. Um, just direct them and, and you'll learn how to do that. The next one is we get to is Amber. Um, that one is a uh, neat sensation. They'd like to touch things. They like to get into things. This is when families start getting maybe a little embarrassed because um, they're out in a store. Next thing you know, they're picking up things and because they want to feel the sensation of that fuzzy blanket or they see a teddy bear and they pick that up or they see a bow on something and they rip that bow off an object in, in a store and going, oh my God. Um, or you're at a, you're walking to a restaurant and they look over and they see that lobster on the table. I go, ooh, that looks good. Don't go grab that lobster. Uh, so, and, and um, matter of fact, the AFO has cards that you can get that says, please excuse. Uh, and it talks about Alzheimer's and it lets the waiter know what's going on and maybe the table so that they understand that they're just not um, being belligerent or mean or mad or uh, doing things out of the ordinary, what a normal person would consider the ordinary. Um, so if you need those cards, Kathleen can provide those to you. We still still have those, correct, Kathleen? Yes, we certainly do. Okay, great. <laughs> um, so they need more touch, look, feel, taste, smell. Those are things that are coming um, uh, bigger to them. So, you know, eating an orange, that's gonna be a great sensation to them. Um, so just kind of remember when you get to the amber stages that those are gonna be um, things that you wanna engage with in touch. Um, they may be private or quiet, or they could be public and loud. Um, you, you just don't know. They're gonna change at a moment's notice. Um, they are gonna be more combative. So if they are incontinent and you are going into a, a sensitive area, and let me talk a little bit about the sensitive areas. Uh, there's four of them and it's the mouth and the lips, uh, the fingertips and the palms of your hand, the genitalia area and the bottom of your feet. Well, as caregivers, we're in all those areas. Uh, so if they are incontinent and you're getting ready to change your adult briefs and you go into that area without uh, maybe letting them know what's going to go on, you could have some issues and they could be combative. And then, you know, the caregivers will just keep on trying and trying and trying. And that's when aggravation starts. They can start hitting you or biting you, walk away. Um, probably they've already soiled their, their adult briefs maybe half an hour, hour ago. So another 10 minutes is no big deal. Come back in 10 minutes, do a different approach and you'll be successful. Uh, get them to help you you know, pull down their adult briefs. Uh, again, just getting them involved. Um, so uh, different textures and shapes, colors, movement, those are good for somebody with an amber. Uh, verbal sounds that are familiar to them. Um, they prefer sweeter uh, tastes like candy. So you're gonna see uh, candy um, eaten a lot. Um, my dad had the biggest sweet tooth. My mom had candy jars all over the place. Uh, and unfortunately, those candy wrappers were all over the place too, because he didn't know where to put them, so he just threw them on the floor. Um, or salt. Um, those are the type of things. So uh, um, a pretzel, potato chips, pretzel, you know, those are, they like those type of tastes too. So chocolate and salt, it goes together anyway. Um, so, uh, and don't get impatient. So you got to have patience with them. Um, don't get mad at them. Um, if you are getting a little upset with them, like I said, walk away and come back and re-engage and it'll be a different process. Ruby, this is when it really gets a little bit more difficult. This is when um, they're gonna start losing some of their motor skills, um, their fine motor skills. So um, eating could be a problem, holding a fork. So this is where you might have to start feeding them. Their speech will become very garbled. Um, and then all of a sudden you're going, what are they saying? But all of a sudden, they're gonna speak clear. And the reason they do that is because they don't lose social chit chat. That's part of the brain that does not get damaged. Um, also in that same area is where cuss words are stored. And once the filters are gone, holy mackerel, somebody that was going to church, never said a cuss word in their life, becomes a sailor. 
and I know I'm characteristic sailors that cuss, all sailors don't cuss, but um, all of a sudden you'll hear words that you never thought they even knew will come out of their, their, um, their head. So that area is protected. Uh, music is uh, there. So if they start getting combative, start singing with them. It doesn't matter if you sing out of tune um, and sing something that they might know. I always choose Christmas carols because everybody knows Jingle Bells or Here Comes Santa Claus and they'll start singing with you and it deflates the situation and it gets them happy again. Um, so those are gonna be the difficult things with a Ruby um, is their attention span and their speaking. Um, their movements are gonna be very difficult. So if they start walking, they're not gonna know exactly uh, when to stop because what they're doing is they're searching for a chair and their vision has become impaired. So it makes them more difficult to just do simple things that we take for granted. Um, so you have to be aware of that. And you know, if you see someone walking around that has Alzheimer's, that is your loved one, and you know they're at this particular level, you know, help them to a chair, because that's what they're looking for. They're looking for a place to sit down or the bed. Um, and they just really don't have the capability of knowing how to do that. Um, so, you know, Walking in a same path. Again, this is where you want to make sure the house has clear pathways, not for just balance and fall prevention, but they like familiarity. So if they're used to going around the right side of the sofa, make sure the right side of the sofa is cleared. Don't change things around. Don't move furniture around. Um, it's much like somebody who is blind. Um, I used to be on the board for the Tampa Lighthouse for a blind, and they have a room that they would look at your house and situate the furniture and they would teach somebody how to move around the furniture. So moving furniture after someone knows where it is, is not a good thing. So you wanna be careful of doing something like that. Um, picking up things, holding things, uh, they like to push, rub, you know, uh, give them a little Windex and let them, let them clean the glass top. They'll just sit there and rub that table and you would think they're gonna rub a hole in the glass, but it gives them something to do, it gives them a purpose. Again, folding clothes, they might, fold them the way that you want to, but it gets them engaged in an activity. Again, you want to keep their muscle memory going as long as you can, because eventually that muscle memory is going to go. Um, and that's in the next gym that we're going to talk about. Um, so now we're going to go to uh, a Pearl. Uh, they're not aware of the world around them at all. Um, they're in their own little world. Um, it's the last thing to end of life. Um, their movement goes. That's a sensation on the top of your head. So their muscle control is on. Uh, the best way I can describe this is if you go to a gym and you lift weights, all of a sudden your muscles become engaged and they're tight because you're stretching the muscles. So that's called muscles are on. But once you lift the weights down, your muscles go off. Well, somebody has a pearl, their muscles are going to stay on most of the time. Um, so if you're trying to bathe them, trying to get their clothes on, um, and they're all crushed like this because they're going to cross their arms, their inner legs, where their joints are, and they're always going to lean to the side or something like that. Um, so now you're going, wow, I got to bathe them, and you're going to get underneath their armpits. So all of a sudden, you're taking their arm and you start pulling it to get underneath their armpits to uh, bathe them, and they start screaming at you. And the reason they're screaming at you is because you're actually tearing the muscle off the bone. You don't mean to, you don't know that's happening, but you got to remember their muscles are turned on. So you're going, oh my God, how, how do I get the muscles off? Again, singing, it will stimulate the brain a little bit. And all of a sudden they'll, they'll light up and they might even start singing with you and their muscles will relax. It'll give you time to get their clothes on, to bathe them, get their adult briefs on. Uh, and they'll go right back to being uh, in their muscle on mode. Um, so uh, again, their swallowing is gonna be um, uh, affected by it. So you gotta be careful what you feed them. Uh, water is going to be very difficult to swallow. Everyone thinks water is the easiest thing to swallow. Uh, you don't need to put a thickening agent into the water. Um, or you're going to drink something called like Ensure or Boost uh, because it's a thicker liquid. Mashed potatoes, gravy. Um, if you're going to do meat, it's got to be very, very small. Uh, you might even want to grind it. I'm not saying puree, it, but grind it a little bit so it's very tiny. Small bites, very, th very tiny, small bites. And at, a, at Pearl, you're gonna be feeding them because they don't have the ability to feed themselves. So you're controlling what's going in their mouth. And they're kind of like a little squirrel. They like to keep things in the pouches of their mouth. So you gotta make sure that they're swallowing and get it ready before you put any more in there. Um, and you'll be, you'll be able to tell. 
so those are the type of things that you want to be careful with. Uh, they like uh, pleasantries and familiar voices. So obviously they're loved ones, um, but they're going to also forget people. Uh, my dad um, didn't know who I was. I became his, his brother. Um, my two sisters, unfortunately, he didn't have any sisters growing up, so he had no daughters. So it was very upsetting to uh, my two sisters that my dad didn't know them. Um, I just went with the flow because I was Uncle Mac, you know, so I was able to still engage and he let me still um, help him. They wouldn't, he would not let my sisters help him because he didn't know them. Uh, my mom, she was a, a child bride. Uh, she was 17 when he married her. So he always remembered her. Uh, he never had any instances where uh, he didn't remember her. Um, but you also can see people, maybe they married later in life uh, when they were 40. Um, they're in the bed together sleeping. Um, they wake up and they look over um, at them and they see this older person. They don't know who it is. So they think there's an intruder in the bed. So they start hitting on them. And, and the reason why is they want to see the 40 year old. They want to see the 25 year old version of them. Um, that happens when um, at night, you know, they'll, we have clients that will call us and go, there's an intruder in my backyard. And really what they're seeing is a reflection of themselves in the sliding glass door or the window. And maybe they're 85, but they're in the ruby state of mind. So they think they're 25. So when they see that old person, they don't think that's them. So that's the intruder. So you're going, well, why, how can I stop that? Put, shut the blinds, put the curtains down. Intruder goes away. Um, their imagination is going to wander. My dad said that there was a cougar in the palm tree every day. And, you know, you, you don't, I just went, uh-huh. Because uh, there's no reason in arguing. Because he truly believed there was a cougar with the cubs in the tree. So you kind of have to go with the flow. Um, uh, they're hard to connect with at, at a pearl. Um, it is at end of life. The disease is anywhere from five to 30 years, um, depending on different things in their life and their history of their health. Um, so it, it's a very long process or it could be a short process, depending on how old they are when they develop um, Alzheimer's. Um, soft textures are very good for them. Uh, again, they like that feel when they can. Um, slow movement. They don't like anything fast. So like grandkids, a dog, that will really frustrate them that they're running around and everything. So you want to keep that away. A cat, normally cats love to sit on the lap. And, you know, um, they probably should be declawed so they don't claw anybody. But, um, you know, they like that because they like to feel it's soft and everything. And a cat loves to be pet. You know, so things like that. Get a, get a pet, uh, a stuffed cat, you know, a, a, an animal, stuffed animal. They don't know the difference, um, but it gives them that sensation. Um, so those, that's senior gems. Um, any questions? That is a lot of information. It was. <laughs> and I don't expect everybody to retain it. But also, we have all this information in brochures and pamphlets that we'll be more glad to share with everybody. Because the more you know about the disease, the better you can be as a caregiver and the better you can understand the disease. Uh, it, it's a terrible disease. I think it's one of the worst diseases that you can have. Because uh, it, it takes away their memory. So, Bill, do you know who else uses the senior gems as a guide besides senior helpers in Tifa Snow? Uh, nobody does at this particular point. Um, there, there's uh, we. It's part of the Alan Cognizance method, uh, which uh, dwells on the positives. Uh, the other um, types of uh, formations of the, of Alzheimer's. Uh, their techniques, they dwell on the negatives. And I think it's terrible to dwell on the negatives. So, um, so people went in that direction. So uh, no, nobody else really teaches senior gems. Uh, I know I was with another home health company. Uh, we talked about Alzheimer's, uh, but nothing to this degree. Um, and I think this is a, a super way of doing it because you can align the gem with the level. Uh, it's um, more pleasant to say, well, your mom's a pearl instead of going, well, your mom's at end of life. It's just going to be a short time. Okay. That's kind of right. Harsh. Right. Right. But right. It's right. more dignified. Right. Um, I was just going to ask you something and it slipped my mind. Oh, I think that this would be very helpful for folks that are working in communities that have memory care and even assisted living because 
before they get to the memory care unit, they're living in, they're living in the assisted living and even some are in the independent before they move through the different um, types of, of residency. Yeah. And I think this is something that would be very useful for the, for the staff to understand. Yes, and, and, we, and we go to building. Way. Yeah, it's a simpler way than, for example, you know, you have to sit through two four-hour trainings of ADRD for people to get to understand. But this is, it's quicker. It gives them the wheel. Um, for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, there's a wheel. I don't know if you happen to have one handy, but you can go Wait by the seat. I think I do. Hold on. <laughs> okay. And he'll show you what I mean. Well, I don't have the Alzheimer's wheel, but this is the Parkinson's wheel, which is also a form of dementia, guys. So, you know, you if you want to, and it has all the different, like the gems, it has all the gems on the wheel. So if you know your loved one's out of Emerald, you would take the little arrow and you would push it to the gems and it gives you characteristics of the uh, level. It also tells you strategies at work and strategies to avoid. You know, so it can be very, very helpful to the family. Um, again, if you need one of these, we give these out also. Uh, Kathleen knows that because uh, I think it's a great tool for families. Uh, a lot of doctors now that I've uh, attached with, they love these so they can go over with the families and they go, oh, well, that makes sense. So uh, we'll do it for anybody. We Again, we are huge on education. Um, that's, I think, senior health is big thrust. Yes, we do in-home care. That's what pays the bills. Uh, but we are a huge resource. And just because you don't need us doesn't mean you don't call us. Uh, you Maybe you need a handyman. Um, it really doesn't matter what you need. We will definitely... Uh, get you the resource to help and that's with senior gym uh, and we'll go to um, facilities whether it's a rehab facility an ALF independent living because there's a lot of people that unfortunately are in independent living that shouldn't be um, mm -hmm. and the facility really hasn't been taught um, about senior gyms uh, so we like to go in there because then they need to migrate from independent to memory care or independent to all uh, to uh, the yeah. assisted living time so there could be movable steps. So, and we love educating the facility to do that. Sure. And I'm also thinking even with one of the things that the AFO is involved with, with our um, law enforcement, our task force with law enforcement, we just developed what's called a quick card for them to quickly identify some symptoms and maybe some tactics to use. But, and not that the um, deputies would carry the wheel in their car, but I think it would be useful for us to go over in our trainings with them so that they have some type of a reference point. Well, we have, I'm going to show you this. Okay. So instead of the wheel, we have something like this and we can give anybody this. So it talks about the, it shows the gems, it shows the characteristics, interesting things. It doesn't talk about strategies or anything that work, but it gives you a highlight of whatever every gem is. And it's a quick reference card. So this would be great for a police officer, EMS, uh, anybody, restaurants, uh, churches, uh, anybody who uh, is involved with somebody with Alzheimer's, because but let's face it, people go to church with Alzheimer's still, uh, oh, yeah. and they start this behaving in church, and they go, why are they doing that? Uh, you know, and then when they go up to them, they can do social chit chat, and they go, well, why? They, they were really being rude. Well, they're not, because they were doing mood changes, you know, so this really educates, and that's what the AFO is so involved with, and that's why I was aligned with you guys so much in senior health related, because they're huge educators as we are. Um, and, and there's just not enough education, you know, for, for all. Absolutely. Okay, so does anybody else have any questions for Bill? You can go ahead and put them in the chat box. And what I'll do now, which is the reverse of how we normally do it, I'll talk a little bit about the AFO and what we do. So we... Um,